Welcome to the Grand Columbia Channel, which may or may not be here in the future. I'm here on another beautiful day in Bucaramanga, and working hard on a bunch of videos. Now, I was planning to do a coffee time today, coffee time live, uh, with my laptop back and with Wi-Fi in the hotel. I thought, well, let's give it a shot. But this past week, I've had video after video taken down. A couple were uh, blocked for age restriction. Um, I set up the Coffee Time Live, so there's no content. All I did was put a photo up of the park and said Coffee Time Live in Bucaramanga and the date. And it, two hours later, it was pulled down for obscenities. And it was actually removed. And I have seven days to appeal it. The thing is, if you're doing a live video, <laughs> if it's not even going to function seven days, you can't do a live video on it. So where does this come from? Well, on every YouTube video, there's a little uh, tab. You have to, depending on how you have your screen configured, you may it may be right there, or you may have to click on the three dot thing to open it up and you report. And somebody, um, based in Medellin, <laughs> is constantly reporting videos. I've had one that was reported from three years ago. I had one that was age-restricted for sexual content. And all I was doing was explaining how to download the Kodi app for your TV. Um, straighten that up. Yeah, so it's it's all a little crazy, but here's the thing, and this is why I'm bringing it up. Um, YouTube will eventually sort this out, but this kind of thing can really kind of ruin the channel. And so it's happened to other people, and if you do videos long enough, you're going to get these kind of trolls. And because of the way YouTube is constructed... Uh, they know that they can do these things, and yeah, eventually it's sorted out, but in the meantime, it's chaos. And if I can't function, if I can't upload videos, you know, I'm spending about $600 on this trip to Bucaramanga for videos, for content, because so many people want to know about it, including myself. Well, if I get home and I put these videos together and I upload them, and two hours later they're taken down, you know, that, that money's just lost. I'll never get a return on it. And so it looks like I'm going to have to try to find an alternative. Um, you know, YouTube just just makes it so hard. And, and so I'm not sure what to do. I looked at Vimeo. The problem is I'm going to do live streaming, which I want to do every week like we've been doing. Uh, the cost of that is $75 a month, and I just can't afford that. Uh, they have a lesser one, and it's a little confusing. There may be limited live streaming, uh, and that's about $25. But I I don't know yet. I, I've done a number of searches trying to find good live streaming platforms, and it seems like they run anywhere from $150, you know, down to about $70. And uh, I would love to do Vimeo. I look at it every year. I've been looking at Vimeo for five years. Originally, I wanted to start on Vimeo, but the cost involved in it, it just, uh, you know, precludes me from using it. I have to do something. I don't know what it's going to be. Ultimately, the people who watch the videos are going to be paying for what this is. But the thing is, do I put out content enough so that people are going to be willing to pay for, a, you know, that kind of platform. So I don't know. Um, the nice thing of YouTube is, you know, I don't have to pay for it. And so if anything uh, comes through, that's great. If it doesn't, then, you know, at least I haven't lost money. So, you know, I'm kind of at a crossroads. Don't want to be here, but here I am. Now, as for Bucaramanga, um, 
Wish we could do the live. I've really gotten used to the live, having the interaction with you guys and the questions and answers. And I know there's a lot of you that have questions here. And I'll be doing the videos, but just to give you a quick summary after a couple days. First of all, the hotel is fantastic. Um, I'm really enjoying this hotel. It couldn't be in a better spot. I'm right in the heart of the nice thing. Now, which brings me to the point about Bukaramanga. It is gorgeous. It's, it's really nice because it's very wealthy here. And I understand now why uh, some local people were telling me, oh, it's beautiful, but it's, it's like Columbia's Hollywood. Well, it's like Columbia's Hollywood because a lot of rich, famous people live here. And, uh, and you see it. I mean, there's just endless skyscrapers. Now, it has, it has its poor areas. Like every place, everywhere in the world, every city, you know, you're going to have your, your ghettos. And, and it has those. In, in Bukaramanga, you'll find it mostly uh, northwest. Northeast and down, it's very wealthy. And as you go up the, the mountain, um, which you'll see in the videos, um, you know, there's some very wealthy houses that kind of look down on everything. Um, no shortage of restaurants here. It's It reminds me a little of a, a richer Manizales. Now, Manizales is, is not a poor city, but... I say Bukaramanga is is like a whole nother level. Um, I have to admit, it's funny. When I lived in the USA, you almost never found me stepping foot into a McDonald's. I'm not snobbish about it. I just never cared for it. And I never ate much fast food anyway. But if I did, I might stop at a Wendy's. I don't know. The food was just a little more substantial or I don't know. It it, it felt more real. McDonald's always felt just processed and it, it just, it was never a thing for me. Burger King was okay once in a while, but I, I rarely would go to those and almost never for McDonald's. I think the only time I would ever really go to McDonald's is if I was on a trip driving somewhere, I would get a egg McMuffin, a hash brown, and an orange juice. <laughs> and that was my McDonald's thing. So not very much. But here's the thing. When you don't have it before, uh, I haven't had access to it since I was living in Cuenca. And I went to a McDonald's in the three years I lived there twice. Uh, once shortly after I got there, and then uh, shortly before I left. And I, I guess you'd almost say a guilty pleasure, except the thing, quarter pounders without cheese. You know, it's okay. You know, I kind of like, it's a different, it's like a, it's not really a hamburger, right? It's something else. So you won't ever see me go on a regular basis for something like that. But I'm rambling. To get to the point, I get here and there's like McDonald's, there's two of them within a couple blocks. And so I said, okay, send me a quarter pounder <laughs> without cheese. And I enjoyed it. It was, it was good. It's not a hamburger. I mean, if I want a hamburger, I'll get a hamburger. I don't know what you would call it, but it was kind of like a taste of home, which, which was nice. So what I'm saying is there's a lot more here, including McDonald's, than you'll find in a smaller place like Armenia. Now, is Bukaramanga huge? It's really about the size of Manizales. It seems like a, it's a different layout. It's more of a, you're surrounded by mountains and it kind of goes on the west side it's lower, kind of comes up here, and then it goes up a mountain, if you could see that. I, can't, I don't have a screen to see what, uh, what I'm showing you, so hopefully you're seeing that. It's, so it's kind of a cross between a place like Cuenca, where you're in a basin, or like Medellin, where you're in a, a bowl with, surrounded by mountains, 
and Armenia, where you're at the base of a hill and you're getting that wind as it goes up. It's, a, it's like a hybrid of that. So consequently, climate, what you get here is it's warm. It's warmer than Armenia, but it's not bad. It's not bad because you get some breeze. Now, you don't get the constant breeze like in the north part of Armenia, but you do get a breeze. And if you walk around and you stay in the shade in the hot part of the day, it's, it's really not bad. Temperature yesterday, and I was told it was a very typical normal day. Uh, wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. It was just about what you're going to have almost all the time. And it ran in the uh, low to mid 80s, which started around uh, 1030 in the morning. It, it kind of got there. Now, they say the average temperature is about 71 degrees, but that's also including in the, in the night. And the night is kind of cool here. You know, again, with the mountain, the, the, the reaction of the breezes on the mountain. So you get a cool evening. Um, I was up on the, on the roof. There's a huge patio. You can see the entire city, 360. Um, there's a jacuzzi up there. So I was up there and I looked on my phone and it said it was 64 degrees. And that was, that was about 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. So what it was at 2 or 3 in the morning, I don't know. Now, partly because it's a little warmer here than Armenia and partly because people are so rich here, most every public place you go to has AC. Uh, the hotel likes to keep its AC pretty cool. Uh, I can adjust it down, but uh, you find it in all the public spaces too. They they like this their AC here. So would I live here with the with the climate? I I would. It, it it's not my ideal. I really love the climate of Armenia. Uh, it's the average temperature of Manizales is probably the best of any but the problem is the rain and it just rains day and night you never know when it's going to be that kind of uh, you know weather chaos is problematic for me where in armenia it's it's much more manageable i've talked about that uh, so armenia is still it for me but if you like it a little bit warmer and if you like city now like i said this is about the size of Manizales, but it feels like a much bigger city. It feels like a much bigger city because you've got all of these skyscrapers everywhere. When I say sky skyscrapers, I'm talking 20 floors or higher. I think in Armenia, the highest building is maybe 14 floors. I live in one that's uh, 12, so at one time it was the highest, but it's I think it's second or third now. Um, but here, 20 floors and up, this, they're all over the place. Um, so I'm not, I'm not one for city. If you really like city life, then you might like it here. If you like it a little on the warmer side, then you might love it here. Um, what else? Uh, the people here remind me of city people. It different than Manizales. When I say there, they're they're kind of cliquish. You know, if you're not from Manizales, you're not part of the club. If you're from Bogota, for example, born in Bogota, and you go to Manizales, it's going to take a while to kind of be uh, into the society there. In Armenia, it doesn't matter. Everybody's welcome. Everybody gets a hug. Everybody's invited. Here. And again, understand that I'm just basing this on a couple days. I talked to the maid. I talked to a couple desk clerks. I talked to uh, two policemen. You know, like always, picking people's brains, trying to get what they what they think. And they're pretty straightforward about it, uh, except one didn't want to. They, they were uncomfortable. But straightforward in that people here are kind of aloof. They're your typical city person. They've got their life. They're, they're you know, they're just kind of going at 
what they have planned and it's not that they won't be polite to you but they're not going to go out of their way to interact with you um, and for somebody with my personality that's not great because I tend to keep to myself but it's healthier if you can socialize now and then well in Armenia I kind of appreciate that they kind of come at me because I would never do it on my own and so I'm kind of forced into a certain amount of socialization and I can feel the difference of that and I know that it's good for you and so for my own good that's that's a great place to be here my personality I would probably end up a loner just hanging out in my own apartment all the time or something it's it's just a different vibe like you know it but it's not bad it's not that anybody is uh it's not that they're not kind it's not that they're not friendly it's just that you're going to have to reach out now the friendliest people i found here were the policemen i was talking to in a, two different situations but pretty much like the police i run into all the time in colombia they just kind of go out of their way they're very polite um yes sir how are you doing uh you know they're just they're just really friendly and nice and helpful and i know people argue with that other people see it a different way but i'm just saying that's how it always is for me and so that's all i have to say about it <clears throat> i'm not going to say something that i don't experience i have a a friend in armenia that was born there that hates the police because they're never there when you need them they, you know so you know other people are going to have different opinions but um i don't know as long as they're great to me that's all i'm going to say about it is that they're great for me what else about bukaramanga i don't know what to say um rainfall don't know it's, it's rained a little bit at night for the past couple nights during a day it's been um uh, it's been pretty nice today there's it's overcast a lot so it's cooler out yesterday the sun was out and um i was a little concerned i was going to get a burn because i went walking yesterday my legs are still sore i walked um actually about half of the city i uh, when i do the video i will show the maps and i'll and I'll count the blocks. I'm going to guess I probably walk, walked 50 or 60 blocks, maybe. Um, I was pretty tired when I got back. But a lot of that tired had to do with it just got hot. And, you know, when it's cool, like in Armenia, I can walk for hours there. And, you know, you're not overheating, so you just feel fresher. Here, I could just feel it sapping the energy out of me as I was out walking in that. Now, if I lived here, I wouldn't be doing what I, you know, ex extending myself to that extent. You know, I'd be walking to this place to do something or to that place or walk to a park or like that. And so it wouldn't have been an issue. Um, what else? Parks. It's known as a, the city of parks has a fascinating history and i'll save that for the, the actual video um uh, on that part so far i've got uh, videos for the bus trip um, for the parks i've got uh, one dedicated for the hotel itself i'll have one for the history i don't think i can afford to get to the national park i was planning on it but um with what's happening with the channel I, I better save every penny penny from this point i half of the reason i came was i wanted to go to this national park but it doesn't look like i'm going to be able to do it um so you know maybe another day when i get the car going and i'm legal to drive you know i'll, I'll come back i'm sure um i think that's about it i just wanted to give you a heads up of where I'm at, what's going on. If you on Facebook, we have the Facebook page, Adventure in Grand Columbia, where I put up videos. Um, when I go on a trip, I'll just as I, as I do video, I'll snap some pictures here or there and I'll put those pictures up. Maybe I'll make a quick mention of what's going on. 
so if you're not on that web page, you might want to take a look at it. I hope you get to see this video. I, you know, if I when I upload it, I'm sure you'll get to see it for the first couple of hours. After that, I just don't know. Um, so we're going to call it a wrap for today. This was my coffee time non-live without the coffee and without the live. But hopefully I will see you soon.